this is Paul. I thought today I'd share a few tips with you on serving, and in particular we've got to discuss the low serve. So what I've got is my little diagram of a court, and I thought we'd just talk through uh, why we use a low serve, where we should uh, serve to, and what little tips we can use to improve your low serve um, in terms of direction and possible responses to it, rather than the actual technical side of it. So first of all, why do we use a low serve? Well, the main reason is we want to get tactical advantage from the first strike of the shuttle. And that's what the low serve is. It gives an opportunity to play a shuttle from here into this area of the court, keeping it as low to net as we can. So hopefully the opposition will lift it to us and we can be on the attack. Um, so that's the basics of using the low serve. But where should I serve it to? Well, if we just put a few players on court, um, then we can look at where we should serve to. So, if that's going to be the server here, and we're going to have my partner here, we've got the play returning serve here, and we've got their partner over here. Most of the time, a lot of players, especially intermediate level, all they consider is getting the serve in play. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that. It's not just about getting somewhere along that line. We can do better than that. So let's just walk through the, the, the better areas to serve to. Most of the time, it's actually better if we can serve it into this zone. Why will that be, you think? Well, let's just have a quick think about that. If I serve it into here, the player returning that serve has got to go wide from inside the court to outside if they're going to try and hit those tram lines. It's a higher risk shot. If they don't have control of the shuttle, then they're going to hit it out. So by playing it into this zone, it's going to be a lot harder to keep the shuttle in. It's fine you say, great, what happens if they hit down the middle. Well, that's okay. They're in play. This player here can see a straight shuttle coming at them to play off it. So the most important thing is we want to try and get it tight into this zone. And by doing so, we're trying to gain the first tactical advantage. So what can we do to make it a little bit more difficult for guy or girl returning that serve to play a good return? Well, the first thing we should we recognise is we have to be technically competent to serve. If we are very good at serving and keeping it extremely low and tight to this front line, it's more difficult to return the shot. If you tend to hit it a little bit hard, it's still a rising shuttle coming over the net, then it makes it a lot easier for this player to intercept. So if a shuttle's landing in this zone, rather than the front line, then we're making it easier for them. And the chances are they can be hitting the shuttle downwards. So the tighter we get to the line, the better. And what it also means is as that shuttle is just getting to the crest of its curve, it should be just about going over the net. So as soon as it's reached the net, it's at its zenith, and then it's dropping down. So ideally, We've got to practice a low serve so we get it as tight as we can into this area. What happens if we've got a player who likes to stand very close to this line and be very, very aggressive? Well, the first element we've got to think about is if we've got a tight low serve, then I'm not particularly worried how aggressive they want to be. I know that they're going to still have a lot of problems in return my serve. So confidence is a, is a big factor here. If you're confident and you play positively, you'll serve it well. When you start lacking in confidence and you lose that rhythm of the shot, that's when these shuttles start popping up a little bit. And that gives this player the confidence to attack even harder and try and score a winning point. So here's a couple of tips for you. First of all, note where this player is stood and also, where his racket is, or her racket is. If we're holding the racket out here, then 
they've got to move that racket a long way and the tighter you can get it into this corner the better it may be if they've got a more neutral uh, racket position then they're waiting for that shuttle to go either side so the first test we can do is I'll put it in there if they seem to re return those very well I might try aiming at the opposite shoulder of the player and we might find we get a completely different result going from the left shoulder to the right shoulder or opposite way around they're great if you hit to the right shoulder not so good on the left shoulder always worth the test now some people think well I tell you what I want to serve it out there and perhaps a one-off will be very very good tactically the pros and cons of doing this so let's just run through them if I've got a left-handed partner the most likely response from the shuttle out here is to go into what most consider to be the backhand corner so if my partner's left-handed then they're playing to their forehand not the backhand so I may want to use this as a tactic recognizing that that might be the response that someone will play so I'm going to use that if they start playing to the mid court then my partner is still left handed can cope with those quite adequately but I've moved them away from here and I've moved them over there now it doesn't mean to say they're going to change their position when they're standing but it does mean I'm making them think that I can now go either side and it gives a little bit of hesitancy they're not sure which way I'm going to go and that is to my advantage after all I'm the only one who knows where I'm going to put the shuttle and um, from from a tactical point of view it'd be very useful considering that we're supposed to be a pair if I make sure my partner is aware exactly where I'm going to serve it to so maybe one or two hand signals behind your back like the pros use would be very useful for you something worth thinking about and designing something like that with your partner so take into consideration we've now got an opportunity to create hesitancy by going in one corner or the other one of the reasons why a lot of times we don't like this area is basically it opens up the angles now I've got a straight shot into most people's back end corner now I've got exposure to this zone bearing in mind I'm over here even if I move there after I've served I have still got to cover a lot of ground to be able to take shuttles in this zone it also opens up potential cross court replies shuttles going across me especially when I've moved over and now my base is here that's a long distance so I've opened up the angles on the court but there's one other thing you can do and a lot of people don't notice it you see where I stand here maybe I just need to move a little bit to one side so six inches that way six inches that way now then let's understand why that might be important for you if I take my original position and say I'm serving to this spot note where the shuttle crosses the net if I move over here note where the shuttle crosses the net now completely different place what this means is unless this player here adjust their position at all we have now got two advantages one the shuttle will cross the net in a completely different zone and be coming on a completely different angle and if that's the case it means that this player here will not be able to play exactly the same shot they've been playing before so from your point of view just making a slight shift can have a massive tactical advantage in terms of how this player can cope with that shot the other thing to consider also here is that if I'm going to flick 
this opens up this corner a little bit more, makes it a little bit easier to hit into this zone. And I'm going to flick serve rather than a straighter shot. So it gives me an added element that if I want to use a flick serve, I have now opened up that corner a little bit more in terms of angles. So when we're serving, we have to consider all these things. As I say, with your partner, make sure you both know which serve you're going to, going to use and where you're going to serve it to. That way, the element of surprise is only on the player returning the serve, not that player and your partner, who's also got to respond to any returns. So, very quickly to round up, this is the kind of zone that we are going to be trying to hit most of the time. But there are tactical reasons where we may switch or we may move along the line a little bit because we find that a different angle gets a weaker response. And that's your job as a server is to try and find those weaker opportunities. We don't expect to get a, an easy point, but we are looking for tactical advantage where a weak return may give us an opportunity to set up a scoring opportunity. That's the tactical advantage. Ideally, we want this serve dropping in as close to that front line as we possibly can make it. What we don't want is it going too high and we don't want it going back here into court. So there you go, a very, very quick roundup, very simplistic on tactical serving and where to serve the low serve in badminton. I'll see you again in another video.